once you have the steering column on the bench, you have your main steering nut that holds your steering wheel on. Now, down inside here, there's a lock tab. So we need to find the lock tab and unfold it. That's it there. I think here's another one over here. I believe that's okay. I like to use a nut gun for this. There you go, the nut's off. Here's the lock tag. Now, this lock tag has one folded back and there's holes in here. There's one hole there and one hole there. Actually opposite each other. And they're actually puller bolts. And you can get a little plate, drill two holes, put some bolts down in there and pop the steering column off. Now experience shows me that this is a, a pot metal they call it or muck, I call it muck metal, it's just junk. And most times you try and get the tool down in there and you screw the threads in, you put a little bit of pressure on and the threads pull because they're not protected. This had no cap on the steering wheel anymore. If it had a cap it may be a different different job but this one here I reckon it'll be hard to get out so what we might do is put a little pull up a little flying saucer or something in behind there so we'll set it up and come back and pop the steering wheel off I've got the little flying saucer puller on it's in the back there we've put um, a bit of oil on the threads so we'll give it a bit of a go and see. So take the tension. Getting Looks like this is going to be a tight one. We'll back him up a little. Find the socket. Sneak the, sneak the nut gun on and just see if the see if the percussion will knock it off for us. Sorry about that. Well, this is a tight one. Oh, well, I'll work away for a little bit and take the camera out of the road so I can get Well, there we go. We did get it with the puller eventually, but boy, it took some doing. That's just that muck metal. And you can see where the puller was pushing on the end, but that was a tight one. They're not normally that tight, but there's been a little bit of, you know, a bit of moisture sitting in this one, I feel. This outer nut here is quite rusty. Um, normally they're not that bad. And this fella here 
this nut here, it will probably be tight. Now, um, I think from memory it's about 60 millimetre, 65 millimetre. Most people won't be expected to have a spanner like that. So, what the job is then, is I have a, I have a punch that I've made especially for doing jobs like this. That's starting to move now just a little bit, so we'll it's not the right tool for the job I know, but when this comes undone, this is a nut with a lock nut on it. Um, on this gland, it has a, a upper seal to keep the moisture out of the column in it. It has an o-ring down halfway. And this holds tension on the valve mechanism. So I'll undo that. I used to have a spanner that slid down here and picked up these two lugs, but um, I don't have one anymore. And there's other ways of doing it. Right, now we're up the other end of the cylinder. And as we wind the steering wheel one way, it pushes out, as we wind it the other way, it pushes in. Now the pin that goes in here, that fits onto your pitman arm, that goes out the side of your tractor up on the left hand side to your drag link, to your front, um, to your front axle. So at this point, I like to keep a can under here, because any oil that comes out of here, Looks like we've got it pretty well all drained. Any oil that comes this side of the cylinder will come out. Now that is your main piston. And with your main piston, I'll just drop a little bucket down here to catch the drips. With your main piston, this is your gland nut that sits down the bottom. You have an O-ring and a backup washer here that sits up the, up the end and it's clamped in where the steering box sits on the top of your gearbox housing. The clamping pressure of these bolts here holds that in place and it holds that shoulder against the top of the gearbox. So there's O-rings in there which we need to replace. So we'll put that aside for the moment. Now this is your main piston and to get your main piston off, you can see on the end there there's a couple of holes. To get the main piston off you need to hold this and there's a round socket that sits on here and two pins go in and you can undo that. And that unscrews, there's a thread in there. Well, I have had them when the tractors only turn one way that this has come unscrewed. Um, also, if this, we call this a dog bone because it looks like that at the other end as well. And um, there's another pin that goes through here and from time to time these dog bones, they break out or they break up on the inside there. And if that's the case, you need to get this piston off. We don't need to do that, there's nothing wrong there. Um, so if you're just resealing it, there's no need to go any further with this thing apart from replacing the O-ring and the backup. Um, this has a thread inside it and your steering column engages in that thread. Um, and with the thread, you'll see as I turned it up here before, um, I could make it go in or out. That was the manual steering. And there's always a little bit of movement here and that works the valve so when you turn it say clockwise to the right well that moves this but it also opens the valve and gives you hydraulic back pressure as well or hydraulic assistance pressure would be a better term so we'll put this aside and see if we can bump this fellow out now these these get tight on the o-ring sometimes you don't want to muck up the thread that's up the back. 
So what we do there, if we are having trouble getting one out, that's just a piece of alloy. So it's an alloy pump so we don't damage the bottom of the thread. And that's still playing hard to get. catching better than the bloody Australian cricket team. So this is your main control valve. And as I was saying before, when you have the manual steer option, this screws up in up inside and that gives you your manual steer. So it moves this up and down because this is fixed. So we'll look a bit further into all this for you. And these valves here, in the, you'll see a little black mark there. And the six O rings down the column, and they sit about there. And what they do, they seal off these lands here. Um, as these lands are high, you can see they're a bit high there. Um, what that does is you have pressure oil coming into one side here. I can't remember which one yet. And it comes in, and when you turn the steering, that pushes back and forth and opens this little valve in here opens or closes that. So when you turn one way, it opens a valve, the oil comes through here, through the valve, and off out to do the steering for us. So anyway, we can pull all this apart yet. Now this is down the end of the steering column. This is where this, where the nut was. And there was O-rings down in the side here. And they were bastard to get out sometimes. See, that's one. And these are some of the original O-rings, and in the Sparex kit that we're going to fit, they supply these brown O-rings. But these brown O-rings are a heap of trouble. Um, on the John Deere tractors, if you have a little bit of a hydraulic leak somewhere and your oil starts getting hot, these O-rings play up. So there's six O-rings down the, down the tubes there, and that's why we make this little tool. And we one by one hook them all out. I found also a quick way of getting them out is get the air hose in there. And just the air nozzle and just whop, and give it a quick blow, <laughs> all the O-rings will come out for you. And um, down the bottom end, down, down this bottom end here, there's an O-ring and a backup washer that seals on this thread. So there's six O-rings down here and one gland washer down the bottom, or one gland o-ring. Now, if you have one of these tractors and it's steering fine, and all of a sudden it just starts pouring oil out the top here. Out the, I mean, zoomed in that much, I can't see where we're going. Um, and it comes out the top here. Um, one of these six o-rings or some of these six o-rings are probably cooked. Now, to do the job on the tractor, you can just undo the nut, wind it out, and as you turn the steering wheel, that will pull it up through the, through the o-rings. And you can sit on the tractor seat with this all in place still and pop those new o-rings in, a heap of grease on it, wind it back into the housing, and you'll get yourself going without having to pull it off. So it's just another option. If it just starts leaking out the column for no reason, up under your steering wheel for no reason, 
you probably don't have to pull the whole thing out. A quick fix just to keep you going is wind the steering column out, replace these six top O-rings and heaps of grease, slide it back in and away you go. So I'll get these O-rings out and we'll come back in a minute. Right, I told you there'd be no special tools. We have a 30 millimetre spanner clamped to the front jaw of the vise and what we do now is to get this valve assembly apart there's a circlip at this end, a snap ring. So what the idea is make sure it's in totally straight that's nice and straight there there should be a little snap ring in here I was too far down in the groove here, so in the groove of the spanner. And that's how it should go. Well, it's hard to get a good mechanic, isn't it? Okay, so what we can do now is support that. And undo it. And that's what you're left with. All right, we'll get this on the bench and we'll work through it. Okay, we're back. This needle bearing will come off. Now the taper goes towards the valve. You have a needle bearing in there with a hardened steel support. If you want a needle bearing to make a pull or do something out of them, I've used them. I think it's a 7-8 shaft. Bloody beauties for doing anything with. Now. Slide the top valve off. Now you'll notice it's a shim pack. Keep that shim pack together and with the top. We'll put that this side. There's a little plunger that sits inside the valve. That pushes that valve open and shut. Now at this stage what we need to look at is that valve and if you look in this hole here and that pushes that opens the valve and you can feel it come back tight it's a nice solid spring always look for that if you don't have that you can put a punch down this end down that hole and you can just give that a gentle tap and what will happen is the ball will come out and behind the ball is a spring and then there's the valve. They do fail from time to time but this one is in good order. It's sitting there nicely, it's moving well. And we have the bottom valve. Now once more, check that the spring's working. That feels good too. That's nice and even. It's not burred on the end. The collar's good. Now, with this one, you'll notice some extra holes. These two holes here. They're return holes. That's how the oil gets back into the top of your gearbox. So, this one, with the two holes, goes towards the threaded end on the bar. This one, with no holes apart from the valve hole, this is the top one. That's the bottom one. Don't mix them up. <laughs> I can tell you what happened. I did it once. I did a steering up and um, didn't matter what I did, it kept pouring all out the top nut here. And that's what had happened. Um, when I was learning to do them, I got them mixed up. It was a lesson I never forgot. Here's the other needle bearing down the other end. It's got shims in there. Just check that it's okay. And there's another snap ring down the end. And another washer 
that locks on over the snap ring. So well that's about it. Now this shaft here, can you see, I'll see if I can get it where you can see. There's a couple of marks here where these washers sit, the big washers in between to push the valves. I have had them over time that they get worn into the shaft here and you have quite a quite a lip there. This one's fine but um, what you can do then is just braze it up. Get the brass out and braze him up. You can just see the lines and on this one it's good. So from here we wash everything up. We have another inspection while we're washing up and then we start putting it all back together again. So stay tuned for the next video. The next clip will be how to assemble it and set it up properly. Well one thing that we haven't covered is this top nut. Now while you have it off, take this top nut off this washer stays on. There's an o-ring under the washer for where it seals and there's a seal sitting in here so we need to get the seal out. Before we wash everything up so that's rusted in pretty well. I'll have a look around and see if I can find another nut. This one's copped a bit of a, a bit of a hard life. And that's the dirt excluder seal. So there's a new one of those in the kit. And down inside, there's a bush in there, a thin bush. The bush, I don't believe, comes in the kit but not often do you have to replace it. So normally we just tidy this up and do the seal. So that's it. The disassembly is complete. Um, we'll, we'll go and wash everything up and then continue on.